Hello, 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 hello. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? I always look at the view count on Ryan George's pitch meetings, and the Echo pitch meeting, which we're about to react to, has 732,000 views. And I feel like I'm used to seeing him get like a million views on his videos. Depends. Uh, it, de it does depend. Let's see. Rebel Moon got about a million. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom got a million. Wish almost got a million. Those Loki have been almost out got a million. For a longer period of time now. Irrespective, it seems to me that uh, people are so frustrated with Echo, they don't even want a pitch meeting. You know what I'm saying? I don't think so, but... I don't think so. I don't think Mortal so. Mortal Kombat! Do, 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 do. That's a what? great in line. <laughs> Sorry. He says it to Shao Kahn at the end of the movie. <laughs> I know, but like your your rendition of the song was a little bit confusing. It was awful. I don't, I don't know how to... Yeah, there do do we do go. I don't know how to music with my mouth. You know, because he like bursts out of the temple in Thailand and he uh. goes, you weak, pathetic fools, I've come for your souls. And Raiden goes, I don't think so. Wow, you clearly watched this movie <laughs> way more times do 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 than do do I have. Come on. <laughs> I'm just deliberately turning it into the Mario theme. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, you got some new content for me? Yes, sir, I do. The people demand their Marvel content. Yeah, they do. Well, less and less. Oh, uh, well, I wrote <laughs> some stuff anyway. Yeah, that's totally fine. So I'm thinking we do a show about Maya Lopez. Oh, interesting. And tell me something, who is that? We introduced 736 new characters last year. <laughs> she was in the Hawkeye show, a little. Is he being facetious when he says 736? I have no idea. It sounds facetious, but then I don't read the comics, so I don't know if that is truly the case. It sounds like a ridiculous made up number. Yeah. Uh, also goes by Echo. You know, I think that does sound kind of familiar and that works for me. Let's give her <laughs> her own show. Amazing. <laughs> so a good chunk of the first episode is gonna be kind of like an extended previously on segment to get people up to speed. Really, a good chunk. Yeah, well, people are always complaining that it's hard to keep up with all the Marvel stuff. So if a He's good chunk of the first episode is kind of previously on, that'll shut people up. I feel like there might be a nice middle ground. No. And and during that whole backstory bit, I figured that's a good opportunity to have Daredevil come in. He's from She-Hulk. You know it, sir. They're gonna have this big old fight scene, and sometimes it's gonna look like they're hitting each other. Man, it's really gonna help with marketing to have Daredevil in this show. We're gonna lean into that heavily. Uh, well, he's literally just in that one scene. I know. I don't care. I don't so care. So disappointed. Well, okay, then. So what actually happens in the show? Well, like five months after shooting Kingpin in the face at the end of Hawkeye, Maya's on the run and heads back to her hometown in Oklahoma. And what does she want to do there? Take over from Kingpin and become the Queen Pin from Oklahoma? Yes, and so since she's being followed by bad guys, she's putting her whole family at risk. Oh man, what's she gonna do to protect them? Nothing, she doesn't <laughs> seem to care about that. Oh, and she's also gonna provoke the bad guys by planting some explosives on their cargo heading to New York. Couldn't that potentially explode anywhere and hurt a lot of innocent people? Yeah, she's a badass. Kinda messed up. Well, she's an anti-hero, <laughs> so it's bad. I hadn't even thought oh, about okay. that. Well, anyway, at a certain point, her and two of her family members are gonna get kidnapped by bad guys at the roller skating rink her uncle works at. Uh-oh. And Maya's prosthetic leg is gonna come off and be taken by one of the captors. Yikes, how's she gonna get that back? They're gonna drop it next to her and leave her with it. Oh, well, that worked out immediately. Yeah, <laughs> and it has a little knife in it, so she cuts herself loose. A very handy foot. And then she builds a functional <laughs> gun complete with laser sight out of some scraps, which is a skill that she has. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's a skill that she has. It says so right here. Well, great. So then she's gonna kill a bunch of bad guys, but the final bad guys get a phone call and leave. Well, getting a phone call is pretty scary. Just text me. Well, this phone call is especially <laughs> scary because we're going to find out that the kingpin is still alive. What? How did he survive getting shot directly in the face? By not dying. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's good. So he shows up and tells Maya, like, hey, I'm okay with you having shot me in the face, and I want you to come to New York, and I'll give you my empire. Oh, well, that's what she wants, right? Yeah, but not like this because she's mad at kingpin. He had her father killed. Oh, right, right, right. So she doesn't accept the offer. Nope. And so kingpin gets so mad that he's going to attack this big event in town. What's the event? A powwow. Whoa. Wow. So he's got a bunch of bad guys there, and there's a guy with a rocket launcher. He's very scary. He's just gonna blow up a powwow? Yeah, blow up a powwow with the rocket. That seems to be what I've written here. And also, he kidnaps Maya's cousin and grandma. Uh-oh. But the whole family's gonna fight back. Oh, they are? Yeah, even her comic relief cousin, Biscuits. His name is Biscuits? Oh, that is funny. What's he gonna do? Well, he crushes, like, 12 men with a monster truck. Oh, my God. And Maya's gotta go up against the kingpin. Well, that's gonna be impossible. 
the guy's massive. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, cause see, she has powers now, so she uses those and shares them with her cousin and grandma. What are the powers? Glowy ones that do whatever I want. <laughs> nice, and so she kicks Fisk's butt? No, she's gonna touch him with her glowy mind powers and make him confront his own childhood trauma. Hashtag. Oh, yeah, so he cries and runs away. Uh, weaponized therapy is tight. <laughs> and then we're gonna end this whole thing with a nice family barbecue and everybody's happy. Yo, he like cycled through this whole thing fast. Yeah. This is like the shortest pitch meeting. Yeah, this is like a very just cliff notes rudimentary this is the plot and when you hear it like that it's like wow that's really dry and maybe not that great <laughs> i don't know i think that's the point yeah that's the whole point in my opinion is that he could literally just tell you what's going on and you hear how the jokes write themselves <laughs> like a play on the Fast and Furious thing? No, just literally doing it. Oh, okay. So what do you think? Hey, we've got Daredevil and Kingpin to focus the marketing around. I say we make this TVMA sprinkle a little blood just for publicity's sake. Uh, that should lure people into clicking. Do you think it's bad that we have to lure people now? It might not be. Wow. Damn. The things that he was saying and the way that he did the pitch meeting, I'm like, okay, yeah, I see what, I see what you're doing here. It's like, super just matter of fact to the point dry and when when you hear it like that i spilled coffee on myself earlier in the middle of the pitch meeting and i'm like god dang it it's like it just went all over my hand and i'm like no let me just keep it cool but it's on my shirt. Anyway, go ahead. God. Okay, you mucky pup. Yeah, so it just sounds like not great. And then I feel kind of bad because there were certain things that I did enjoy in the moment when I was watching it. Like I did enjoy the all the stuff with her like ancestors. And you and I need to have a powwow. Oh, stop. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I did enjoy them. And now I feel like, oh my God, what does that say about me? Like, uh, is it? Now you feel what the audience feels. I know. <laughs> They're all like, oh, Chara likes absolute trash. I can't trust her at all because she likes garbage. But you know how they say opposites attract? Um. Anyway, I like this. What? Uh, pitch meeting. I had a thought and then just segued away from it on purpose. I was like, fuck. I was gonna say that you and I are the exact opposite ends of the spectrum. It's like, Jabby's never happy. Achara's always happy. I know. But, I mean, like, I, I always try and find things that I like in in things that I'm watching. Otherwise, why bother, right? It's, it's hard to watch something that you're just like, oh my god, this just fills me full of rage. Like, I can't. There's very few things where I'm like, this is absolute absolute trash i have to turn it off right now echo i was like i can continue watching it i can also recognize that there are things in there that are not great i was excited to see my friends that when i saw my friends i was like happy i was happy that i like cool they're getting work that's yeah. awesome you can see them on camera that's great for their stunt reel that made me happy for them beyond that i was just like they didn't care they just didn't care. It did. It does like, kind of feel like that recently with uh, a lot of the Marvel and as well as in general Disney Plus shows where it's like we just need to keep churning out content because people are paying a premium in order to watch this stuff and we've raised the prices. So we better just keep having new content as opposed to like, oh, we better have new and good quality content. I don't think that's what it is. You don't think so? No. I think they just didn't care about this character. Like, okay, look what happened with Loki season two. Yeah. They cared and you see it and mm -hmm. it's great. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't care about this character. They was just like, I guess. We need a new character. I'm all about representation, right? Yeah. Like I think that representation is important in film, but I don't think that needs to be number one. I think that that just needs to be thought about. When you make that your number one, I think that you run the huge risk of telling a story terribly. No, I agree. I mean, I, I think that when it comes to representation, a character's like ethnicity, their gender, their sexual orientation, whatever, that shouldn't be the defining characteristic. That shouldn't be the most interesting thing yeah, about them. And, it, and like, if, if it's like, oh, hi, I'm gay. And that's like your one personality trait like no. work harder i didn't think this was going to be the video where you told the world but anyway <laughs> um yeah <laughs> so, excuse you um <clears throat> all i'm saying is they just didn't care but they were happy to capitalize on the chocolate what are they called the chocolate towels choctaw choctaw sorry 
Um, I'm not trying to like be offensive. I wasn't joking around. I was literally trying to say the name correctly, Choctaw. But like they were happy to capitalize on that, yeah? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, but that's literally, you just put something together to capitalize on that, to appear like with this virtue signaling thing, like, oh, we care about it. It's, we're so inclusive. It did kind of get me though, not gonna lie. No, I, I just, did, I did like, I liked seeing that, but you know, I do agree with if you. If you have to make a video saying we care, you don't care. That's the problem, in my opinion. Now, that's that might be short-sighted on my part, but it's just like, it should be obvious in, in the material that you create. Did they make a video yes, saying that Yes, they, they had care? a specific video um, dedicated to the Choctaw, and I'm like, why? It's just so strange to me. It's after Falcon and the Winter Soldier, was there a whole thing about black people in the ghetto? You know what I mean? Like, or 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 black people that suffered for because of incest, uh, systemic racism, incest racism. I was like, what the hell is this? Systemic racism. Like, did they have a whole video about that after Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or did it just end on Falcon saying, "Do better"? Do better. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, after um, the Scarlet Witch's movie came out, was there a whole documentary about women and sex trafficking? Like, no. It's they, they're like, because the you know the Black Widows, they're all. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? And so I don't know if there's Scarlet any- Scarlet Witch? I'm, I'm sorry, Black very... Widow. Okay. That's what I meant. <laughs> there's all the stories. Uh, 300, 736 characters were introduced last year. Uh -huh. Dark, I, it gets confusing after a while. She dead anyway, nobody cares. All I'm saying is after Black Widow, the movie dropped. There was nothing about, after Scarlet Witch's stuff, there was nothing about mental wellness. Men mental health, yeah. Mental health. So why is there a thing about the Choctaw? They're Choctaw trying to- Choctaw or Choctaw? Choctaw. I don't know how you say it. All I'm saying is, they y'all know what I'm saying. They made a video dedicated to them, and it's like, why? What are you trying to do? I don't know. There's a lot of guilt surrounding that. So I guess. make a dope show. Yeah, that's, that's true. It. Just make a dope show. Just make make content where people are accurately represented. I don't know. I mean, uh, I it's so easy, right? To like watch something and then come in at the end of it and um, when the general feeling is like people don't like it to then kind of go yeah let's like all pile in on this show and be like eh, we don't like it we don't like it we don't like it all I'm saying is at the time that I was watching there were certain things that I enjoyed I did yeah. enjoy the stuff with the ancestry and maybe uh, looking back on it I'm like maybe that wasn't done in the best way or it wasn't great but all I'm saying is I liked it at the time yeah yeah so just for the final time I'm gonna say like when you're leading with trying to be inclusive of a culture I think that it makes it so much harder to tell uh, a compelling story sure it's like now you Story try first. Yeah, now you're trying not to step on anybody's toes. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying not to offend anyone. Now the character can't have weaknesses. Now the character's got to be perfect. If you're going to involve a culture, fine, but like you have to be brave in telling that story to allow flaws to also be seen. It, otherwise it's not interesting. And people people get tired and they're like, ah, I'm out." You know what I mean? Sure. That's all I'm saying. So that's that.